Travel consideration provided by. My tip is the worst lies are the lies you tell yourself. Like smoking isn't that dangerous. You can quit. For free help, call 1 800 Quit Now. Only Dizzy Cottage Cheese will do. Only Dizzy Cottage Cheese will do. So creamy and delicious. Only Dizzy Cottage Cheese. Tomorrow on ET, our new interview with Chris Evans. Why he's laser focused on his dog, Dodger? Right now, he's been my long term partner. Plus, Norman Lear turns 100. Only one show is with the Hollywood legend, never before heard stories behind his TV classics. And that became Dynamite. <laughs> Dynamite! <laughs> and our birthday surprise for Norman. This is mine, that's yours. <laughs> that man is a national treasure. You gotta see this conversation. All right, before we go, the 2022 MTV VMA nominations are in. Leading the pack, Jack Harlow, Lil Nas X, and Kendrick Lamar, with seven followed by Doja Cat and Harry Styles. Happening now. Uvalde City Council meeting again tonight. The big agenda item, a push to change gun laws. That's coming up. Activists and residents of a northwest side apartment complex crowded into City Hall today, demanding help from the mayor. The issues that they say they're facing. Of course, more heat to talk about. We'll get into that and even a glimmer of hope for a few showers. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, we are just an hour away from yet another meeting in Uvalde, but this time tonight, it's the Uvalde City Council convening. Yeah, they're going to take up the issue of gun laws, similar to what the Uvalde School Board did last night. Lee Waldman is in Uvalde. She's getting ready to listen in on tonight's meeting. Lee? Yeah, the big item is this resolution calling for Greg Abbott to raise the age limit to purchase an assault style rifle. Now, if the city council were to pass this resolution tonight, they'll join the county commissioners and the school board in this movement. Ever since the shooting at Romb Elementary, we've seen the Uvalde community mobilized to make substantial change. Lexi Rubio's parents testified in front of a U.S. House committee in June calling for an assault weapons ban. Earlier this month, families of victims were in D.C. yet again, calling on lawmakers to make changes. Dr. Hal Harrell, superintendent of Uvalde CISD, said raising the age requirement to buy the type of weapon used in this attack is the least that can be done. Look at the purchasing age limits of this law and to at least at a minimum move from 18 to 21 there's no reason for an 18-year-old to have something like that. Coming up at 6 o'clock, you're going to hear from Brett Cross. He's the guardian for Uzziah Garcia. He says this resolution, it does not go far enough. Live in Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. We'll see you at six. Thank you, Lee. Well, new at five, a 2020 human trafficking suspect seeing his first day in court this morning. Xavier Green facing a first degree felony charge for the alleged crime which involved a minor. We are not identifying the victim because of the nature of the case. But as Erica Hernandez explains, that victim took the stand today to share her side of the story. Xavier Green, now 21, was only 19 when he was arrested and charged with trafficking of a person under 18. That person, a 16-year-old girl who took the stand today to testify what happened to her back in February 2020. She explained she had met Green and another man named Jamartarius Lawrence online, and when she ran away from home, they offered to pick her up. I didn't know completely what I was getting into. The young girl, who is now 18, told the jury they took her to an abandoned apartment off Blanco Road. She says they stayed there for days drinking and smoking marijuana and having consensual sex. But then it turned into sexual assault and prostitution. There was conversation about um, me, um, things that I could do in order to provide um, some money that I would have uh, sex with people for uh, money. The defense in this case telling a different story, that the victim lied about her age and was never held against her will. I don't think there was any really threats. Um, it was just more of just like this is happening. 
The co-defendant in this case, Jamartarius Lawrence, has taken a plea deal and he is facing sentencing in September. As for Xavier Green, if he is found guilty, he is facing five to 99 years or life in prison. At the Kedena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We have now learned the names of two teens killed over the weekend. They are identified as 14-year-old Edgar Menchaca and 15-year-old Edgar Rojas. The two were shot inside of a vehicle early Saturday morning. It happened on Schley Avenue, not too far from Steve's in South Givers. San Antonio police are still searching for a suspect. We're still working to learn the name of a 31 year old man killed in a crash this morning. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the victim, a passenger in an SUV that crashed into a big rig on Culebra near Tally Road. That man died at the scene. The 17 year old driver taken to University Hospital. We have new video released showing a shooting inside Dallas's Love Field Airport yesterday. We showed you uh, yesterday at five. The 37 year old woman is identified as Portia Odufua. She's wearing a black hoodie. You can see her walking around for a moment before she pulls out a gun and starts shooting towards the ceiling. You see people scramble. After firing a couple of rounds, you see an airport officer return fire, hitting her in the lower body. It is unclear what prompted the shooting. We do know that she was dropped off by an Uber and visited a ticket counter beforehand. No one else was hurt. A fight at a Northwest side apartment complex spilled into City Hall today. Fed up with what they see as subpar conditions at Seven Oaks Apartments, activists and renters loudly called for Mayor Ron Nuremberg's help. Gary Berger tells us more about what they want. Let's go. Crowding into City Hall, residents of Seven Oaks Apartments and activists with Texas Organizing Project clamored for Mayor Ron Nuremberg to help them. The residents and activists have been pushing against the new owner of Seven Oaks, Achieve Properties, over recent evictions and problems at the property, like AC issues, no hot water, roaches, and water damage. We want to be able to have our families come over without feeling disgraced because there's roaches crawling across their feet. They want the mayor, who was not at City Hall when they came, to throw his political weight behind them and put pressure on the property owner. So we want his uh, public support. We want him to stand strong with us. We want him to issue a public statement. City government has been involved, including funding temporary lodging for some residents, something District 7 Councilwoman Anna Sandoval also did with her own campaign funds. And code enforcement has issued two dozen citations worth more than seven grand. Yeah, we've issued them notices. They they didn't fix it fast enough. A spokesman for Achieve Properties said the property was already in bad shape when they bought it in November. They're undergoing a two million dollar rehabilitation program. The biggest challenge we've had thus far is residents not submitting work orders and then denying us access or the repair people access to the property. And while the spokesman pointed out they've only had the property a short while, the city says it's long enough. I could tell you, though, that they've been the owner for a little while now and they had opportunity to fix some of the stuff before we got involved and they haven't. And that's a problem. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. In a statement this afternoon, Mayor Ron Nuremberg told KSAT his staff, quote, will meet with residents in the near future, end quote. However, a top organizer said they expect nothing less than meeting with the mayor himself. Yes, the first day of school is just a few weeks away, and today a U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that mask mandates must remain banned in Texas. Now, this comes after families of seven children with disabilities sued, saying not having mandates in place endangered their children's health. The court decided that schools have other options to accommodate children, including vaccines, plexiglass, and hand sanitizer. You can read the full story on KSAT.com. Floods, warnings, fires, it's what millions of Americans are dealing with this summer, and there's currently little relief in sight. In California, the Oak Fire swelling again overnight. It's the state's largest this season. So far, it's destroyed 21 structures, put thousands of homes at risk, caused thousands of evacuations. Officials say one of the biggest drivers of all this, extremely dry vegetation. Take that that moisture out of the vegetation, you have these volatile uh, conditions, and that's really what's driving this fire. And it's not just California. Texas also dealing with its own dry conditions. Look at this. At least two dozen homes destroyed in Balch Springs. That's a suburb of Dallas. A different story in Missouri. Meanwhile, officials there reporting more than 12 inches of rain in just five hours, which has caused widespread flooding. 
The haves and the have nots when it comes to the rainfall, of course. 101 our high temperature today. That makes it our 47th 100 degree day so far this year. But we're not in record breaking territory. The record 106. Meanwhile, the average 96. So still well above average, of course. Talia's backyard Eagle Pass 102. Shirts 102. But Lakey right now at 98 degrees. Mulverde 99 along with Bernie and Maiko currently at an even 100. Now, as we go through the evening, the, bree the breeze is going to pick up again. Warm but a bit windy, 95 at 8 o'clock, 88 at 10 o'clock, but some wind gusts up to 25 miles per hour. More on a little glimmer of hope for rain in just a bit. Oh, that sounds good. Thank you. Meantime, if you're traveling along 410 near the um, near the mall at uh, Callahan, you will see that there is one lane of traffic that is blocked. It looks like there's been a fender bender there. Emergency personnel on the scene, but it's usually pretty Congested traffic at this hour, and that is just going to make things worse. A warning now for anyone hunting for a job while you're scouring online listings and sending out your resumes. The scammers are also working overtime. Yeah, reports of fake jobs booming right now. One woman tells 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz, the job offer she got seemed great. Maybe too great. <laughs> Courtney Bacon's hands are full with three kids and one on the way. So I have been applying on Indeed for work from home jobs. So when she got this text saying she qualified for a job as a personal assistant, remote and flexible, it seemed perfect, almost. Tell me about the interview process. There was no interview. Nothing. And Still, Joe, who claimed to own a golf course in New York, offered the job running errands. Is there a little bit of hope that this was for real? Oh, of course. I, of course, the money was there. It was good money. And it wasn't like outrageous, but it kind of was at the same time. For 10 hours a week, it paid $750 and she could start immediately. I guess I was just really desperate for some kind of income because we have all these kids and mouths to feed. Courtney was skeptical. Then Joe instructed her to go to Staples and buy check paper. He would email a cashier's check for her to print and take to the bank. Nope, <laughs> this is not real. This is not happening. <laughs> but job scams are happening at an accelerating pace. The Better Business Bureau says Texas reports of employment scams tripled between March and June, and they expect that surge to continue. Just because they receive an inbound message saying they're qualified for a great job doesn't mean the job is real or the person is, is legit. Jason Mesa says the hot job scams now are package reshipping and car wrapping. If you're job hunting, experts say beware jobs for which you instantly qualify or move the conversation to messaging or ask you to send money to the employer. Do verify the job on your own. Courtney called the real golf course and learned they weren't hiring. She told the fake Joe she was done with his scam. They're not even targeting people that have money. They're targeting people who are living paycheck to paycheck. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Beware. Still head on the news at five as the president recovers from COVID-19. What his doctors are saying he can add back into his routine. The battle over abortion rights continues. There's a new website, though, helping women who feel that they are threatened for seeking an abortion. We'll tell you more when we come back. Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. It is an exhaustive annual report of every human trafficking case filed in federal courts. But that data has a big impact on what's happening here in Texas, right here in San Antonio, too. Our Courtney Friedman breaks down what that is. Plus, a dire emergency. That is how local health officials are describing our current blood supply across South Texas. And now they're asking for your help. Tonight, R.J. Marquez shares what the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says about the desperate need for donations right now and how just one of those, just one donation, can save several lives. All that and more coming up today at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Myra. There's a new federal web page to help women who feel they are threatened or discriminated against for seeking an abortion. The Re Reproductive Rights Task Force, it's a brand new arm of the Department of Justice. It launched the page this week in response to the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. 
The reports are made on the DOJ website, that is justice.org, rather justice.gov, justice.gov. And from there, women are directed to either the FBI or the Department of Human Services to report any threats or discrimination. The President Joe Biden taking a new step in his COVID-19 recovery. The White House announced that the president is now able to get back into an exercise routine. The president's doctor says his symptoms have almost completely resolved. His vitals are normal. Doctors have determined the president contracted the highly transmissible BA5 Omicron subvariant. And a reminder, our KSET community partners are holding a vaccine phone bank. It's tomorrow to answer any questions you may have about vaccines. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, whether it be about sending your kids back to school or questions you have for yourself. We'll have medical professionals from University Health here in our studios to answer your questions. That phone bank is from 5 to 7 tomorrow. The number to call will be shared starting tomorrow. But you can submit your questions right now on KSAT.com. You know, just like they say, another brick in the wall. This is just another 100 degree, degree day in the summer. That's right, in the books. Yep. Right? Another little little chapter to our book this summer. Even those clouds are having a hard time developing there off in the distance, but I do think we'll have a little more afternoon cloud cover and the glimmer of hope of just a few showers in the days ahead. Let's talk temperatures first, get you ready for the rest of the week and even into the weekend. More of the same, but what you'll notice is that we're not challenging record high temperatures. We're going to be well below the records and just basically at 100 degrees. Now, here's the thing. It wouldn't surprise me if a few of these days over the next seven days are actually just under 100. So far this month, we've had one day that hasn't been 100 degrees. Let's talk about the glimmer of hope for rain. Okay, let's look at something a little more positive. Now, don't get your hopes too high. I just have to clarify that right away. And you look across the state, it's quiet, upper level high over East Texas. And you look at the satellite and radar imagery, and it really shows how that main activity is just deflected around the far edges of that upper level high. But what we're noticing here is just off the coast of Florida in the Gulf of Mexico. Notice all this precipitation and shower and thunderstorm activity in the Florida in Florida and even now moving into the panhandle. This bump in the upper level flow is actually an upside down dip. It's an inverted trough. We always talk about the dips in the upper level flow. Well, sometimes they're upside down and this one's upside down. So it's stirring things up and there is indications here that this is going to move our way. And so there's some hope for a few showers starting tomorrow afternoon as that moves our way. Let's take a look at the future cast. So I do think the rain's going to be pretty limited, but a few lucky folks could get in on the action. 7 a.m. tomorrow, just some low clouds early. Notice by midday, the rain mainly offshore over the Gulf of Mexico. Then by the afternoon, a little bit of development along the coastal bend here. We're talking Victoria to Beeville down to Corpus Christi and then progressing into the afternoon. Some showers and non severe brief thunderstorms popping up a little bit more inland, basically between I 10 and I 37. So we're talking possibly Hallettsville, Quero, even down to Carn City and Goliad. Again, it's going to be very limited, but at least just a few folks could cash in on a few quick downpours. As for the actual rain chances, we're talking 10% Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then Monday again, we've got another one of those inverted troughs that'll be moving in off the Gulf of Mexico. I mentioned the clouds earlier, having a hard time even developing. You know, flat bottoms, not much vertical growth to them. Can't get any showers and storms generated with that kind of cloud pattern that we have and basically the thermodynamic profile of our atmosphere limiting their development. So 99 right now, dew point is 63, feels like 101. I do think every afternoon for the rest of the week and into the weekend is going to be similar to this. Many locations in the hill country in particular below 100. Kerrville 97, Comfort 98, even Seguin now 98 degrees. Meanwhile, 102 in Castroville, still 101 Stinson on the south side. Winds are gusting out of the southeast, about 20 to 25 miles per hour. That breeze is picking up, and you're going to notice it for the rest of the evening and even past midnight tonight. We'll have that nice breeze that kicks up and gusts to about 25 miles per hour. It's going to simmer down, though, as we get closer to sunrise tomorrow. Actually, 7 a.m. tomorrow, 77 degrees, decent amount of clouds around sunrise, then sunny by noon, 93, then high temperature, 
100 with just that 10% chance of a few showers. In the Hill Country, it looks like we'll be in the upper 90s, even Timberwood Park in Leon Springs, 98, the high temperature. So not a whole lot in terms of rain, but they're, cross your fingers. Yeah, I'm wearing green in honor of our long lost green grass. Is that what you're? It's, it's my tribute. I would like to say I'm wearing a green tie for the same reason, but it's just. <laughs> Because it it's just looks there. good. Yeah, let's go live to California right now. Greg Simmons joins us. Greg, is today State of the Cowboys Day? Is this where Jerry Jones is going to address the media? is exactly what happened today. We're coming to you from live from our favorite spot here, Grant Park in Ventura, California, right up the road from Oxnard here, where they did hold the State of the Cowboys address. And Jerry Jones making no mistake about who his man is as the head coach here. He wants it to be Mike McCarthy. Very, very firm on that would be the best way to put it. And also when we come back, Aaron Rodgers has arrived at the Green Bay Packers training camp via Con Hair. <laughs> Coming up. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to Grand Park here in Ventura, just up the highway from Oxnard, California, site of the Dallas Cowboys training camp this year once again. Today was a state of the Cowboys address, and as you can see here, as they filed in in order, is arrival of the head coach Mike McCarthy, Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones, team owner Jerry Jones. Arriving today, right out of the gate, Jones was quick to throw his support behind McCarthy as his head coach about to enter the third year of a five-year deal after off-season speculation had him looking over his shoulder at his own defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and former Cowboys assistant Sean on Peyton. I want to be real clear. He wouldn't be sitting here today if I didn't think he was the man to lead this team to a Super Bowl. He would not be, and I have choices. And uh, so that's not meant to be insensitive to anybody. That's a fact. Jerry's comments are just really in line with, with, uh, with our conversations. You know, I, I, I obviously have the opportunity to, to meet with Jerry in, in the GM, the head coach realm, and you know, and, and our conversations are about partnership, direction, vision. At the end of the day, uh, we're here to win a championship. After the press conference, Jones reveals some new information regarding the car accident he was involved in back in May, in which Jones, who turns 80 in October, hit another car that surveillance video showed turned in front of Jones from the right lane. Well, I wasn't talking to anybody or or doing anything I shouldn't have been doing driving, so all that was good. And uh, it actually almost was a head-on deal. The guy had somehow got beside me and decided to turn back, actually turn back and come up right. in the other lane. Yeah. So uh, it uh, uh, could have been uh, real bad for him. I, uh, it was a T-bone deal. Believe it or not, he sued me. And check out how Aaron Rodgers arrived at the Green Bay Packers training camp today, straight out of Con Air, dressed like Nicolas Cage. And without question, this has gone viral. The reigning two-time NFL MVP, no stranger to different looks, the 18-year veteran channel Keanu Reeves from John Wick for Halloween. That's the way to arrive at camp. And that means all training camps are now officially open. Live from Southern California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Was Nicolas Cage a really good quarterback? I don't remember... I don't remember him being a great quarterback. Not in Con Air. <laughs> yeah, not in Con Air. No. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back. I want to take you to some traffic trouble spots right now. This is I-35 North at Loop 410. You can see a truck that is stalled off to the side that's backing up what's already a busy part of our city. But that's not all. Here at 410 in Callahan, that slow traffic is the result of what looks like a fender bender with multiple vehicles. This has not moved uh, for the last half hour. Actually, it looks like there's more vehicles there now. And 35 and Martin, look at this. Both north and southbound lanes, very slow going. It is hot, sticky, and very trafficy out there. Well, news is next.